Shalom, family. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Yahuwah, our Father, and Yahusha, Damasha Yah, his voice. Hear, O Yesharo, Yahuwah, our mighty one, he is one Yahuwah. This is Brother David coming to you again to bring you the enmity between the sons of Yah and the sons of God. And this is part five. That word enmity means hatred. Yeah. Whose book was this? You know, your Bible. It was yours. Who came and stole your book? These are facts. The white man. What did he do when he stole your book? He replaced the people in the book with his people and replaced the mighty one in the book with his mighty one. So you have two different groups in this Bible. In Genesis chapter 3, it tells you there's going to be hatred between the sons of Yah and the sons of God. Let's take a look at that. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity. Who is this I? The master of the universe. The creator of all things. He who is seated upon the throne. His name is Yahuwah. And Yahuwah will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed. Where does the serpent's seed come from? His loins. Where does her seed come from? The loins of Adam. How will the serpent bring forth his seed? There is no woman made for him. He's going to come through the same womb of the woman that was created for the man to bring forth his seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. So here the woman is the link to bring the serpent's seed on the earth. A few chapters later, you come to Genesis chapter 10. Something happened before this. The angels came down from heaven, saw the daughters of men that they were fair and took wives of all which they chose. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also, after this, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, the only ones who were left after the Father destroyed all of the wickedness that was on this planet was these three pure blood brothers who will re inhabit the earth. Look who they are, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. What are you talking about, Brother David? There was no daughters born? Yes. But the daughters do not have the nuclear DNA in their womb. Only the blood lineages, those who have the nuclear DNA that is passed down from father to son, from generation to generation to generation, are mentioned in the bloodlines in Torah. Verse 2. Let's look at Japheth's bloodline. 
This is the bloodline that's in question. Gomer and Magog and Madar and Javan and Tubal and Meshach and Tiris. Verse 3. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz and Riphath and Tergama. Verse 4. And the sons of Javan, Elisha and Tarshish, Kittim and Dodanim. Go back to verse 3. We saw something here. The Father put these bloodlines in your book so you will know exactly where each person comes from. Ashkenaz, he's from Japheth. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's not from Shem. Which means that if you call yourself an Ashkenazi Jew, you do not come from the paternal lineage that leads back to Shem. But Brother David, they say that they are related to Abraham. They say that they are from the tribe of Judah. If they're from Japheth, that is impossible. You are correct. It is also impossible to be anti-Shemitic. You know the word they feed you, Semitic? It's Shemitic. You cannot be anti-Semitic or Shemitic against the Jews. Because they're not from Shem. Well, Brother David... If it's just this clear in the Bible, why do they say that they come from Shem? Well, there's a link that brings them into the bloodline of Shem, as they say, which it really doesn't. It's just from their own imagination. And it's through the woman. What do they say? In order for you to be a Jew, and Jew means Judah, they say, you have to be born of a Jewish mother. In other words, a woman who comes from the line of Shem. The paternal DNA can come from anyone else in the world. But that maternal or mitochondrial DNA has to come from Shem. Are you with me? So the woman is the link to bring the Jews into the family of Yahuda. Is that how it works? Of course not. Do you see the lineage here, the blood lineages that we have been reading for the last few weeks? This one begot this one, and that one begot that one has nothing to do with coming through the womb of the woman. Verse 5. Pay very close attention. You're about to see secrets that have been hidden for thousands of years but are now being revealed by these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands everyone after his tongue after their families in their nations verse 5 is coming from verse 4 at the end of each of the bloodlines it has a statement like this Let's see what the statement is for Ham. And it's in verse 20. These are the sons of Ham. After their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. Now let's take a look at the end of the bloodline of Shem. Read them for yourself so you can see what I'm saying. Verse 31, these are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, and after their nations. 
What's missing in verse 5? Japheth. Do you see his name there? Who replaced him? The Gentiles. How, what are you, Brother David, what are you talking about? Okay, 20, these are the sons of Ham. 31, these are the sons of Shem. Go back to verse 5. Look at the statement. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands. Japhet disappeared. And another people emerged in the lands of Japhet and took over his bloodline names. Are you with me? says it right here in your Bible. I went through every translation that there is just to make sure they all speak of an event that happened that those are no longer the sons of Japhet. What could have happened, Brother David? In these lands where Japhet went were a people called the Neanderthal and Denisovan. Look at your map. See Ham in green? Shem in yellow? And the pink color towards the top is Japhet. Now look to your right. Neanderthal and Denisovan lands. These other humans were already in the land when Japhet decided to migrate into Europe. These Neanderthals, big, brawny, uncivilized, wild men, killed the men and they took the women. Brother David, is that a hypothesis, a theory? What is that that you're talking about? Well, it's a theory based on fact. Because they did not find any paternal DNA that came from Japhet. All they found was mitochondrial DNA that came from maybe Japhet's daughters. Are you with me so far? So the daughters of Japhet were the link to bring the Neanderthals and the Denisovans on the world stage. A man who died in 315 BC in Southern Africa is the closest relative yet known to humanity's common female ancestor, mitochondrial Eve. Brother David, what does that mean? Oh, well, I have years of study in this subject, so I understand the double speech that the Europeans use so that you will not be able to understand what they're saying unless you put your heart, mind, and soul into a thing. Everyone on this earth is linked together through a common so-called female ancestor. She's mitochondrial Eve. Mitochondrial is the maternal DNA. So everyone is linked through the black woman's womb. Do you understand? So in order to find mitochondrial Eve's origin, they looked. They dug up a man, 315 BC. And his DNA was the closest to mitochondrial Eve. 
what DNA, what part of the DNA did they use? We're talking paternal DNA. So what were they looking for? Mitochondrial Eve's father, who was a black man from Southern Africa. He died later than Socrates and Aristotle. But a man who fished along the coast of Southern Africa, listen what they're saying, is the closest genetic match for our common female ancestor yet found. They said not the, they didn't say the white man, did they? The one who is the link that brings all of the Europeans, the Neanderthals, the Denisovans, the fallen angels into the material realm is the black woman. And they're telling you here that the black woman was born of this black man. If you trace the DNA in the maternally inherited mitochondria within ourselves, all humans have a theoretical common ancestor. Theoretical common ancestor? What does that mean? Look on the bottom. Theoretical. Concerned with or involving the theory of a subject, subject or area of study rather than its practical application. What would be the practical application, Brother David? Paternal DNA. Paternal DNA would be the practical application. But in theory, they're only coming through mitochondria DNA starting to get this I hope this woman known as mitochondrial Eve lived between 100,000 and 200,000 years ago in southern Africa forget that we're talking the most maybe 8,000 years ago she was not the first human but every other female lineage eventually had no female offspring. Remember, this is a theory. Failing to pass on their mitochondrial DNA. What they're telling you is that the female lineages is from the Neanderthal and the Denisovan women. They're saying that they didn't have any offspring because they see only the mitochondrial DNA in all of the people who are alive today that is of the black woman. As a result, all humans today can trace their mitochondrial DNA back to her. Back to who? That black woman that came from Sub-Saharan Africa, who was born of the black man. Within her DNA, and that of her peers, her sisters, existed almost all the genetic variation we see in contemporary humans. Ladies, they're talking about black girl magic. Your womb is magical. You were able to introduce on the world stage the seed of the, the, seed of the Neanderthal, the seed of the Denisovan, the seed of the fallen angels, and the seed of real pure blood human beings. Since Eve's time, different populations of humans have drifted apart genetically, forming the distinct ethnic groups we see today. They're called hybrids. These ethnic groups, hybrids created by the black woman and her mixing with the Neanderthals and these Denisovans. Now let's go back to this. All of the other female lineages eventually had no female offspring. I don't believe that that happened. I believe something else. I have a theory. Let me show you what the theory is. Let me use a visual aid to explain my theory. 
my hypothesis? Okay, you got three Neanderthals here in the picture. Ugg, he's got the blonde hair with the bat. Ma Ugg, his wife, she's got the dirty blonde hair. And we have Krug, the one with the red hair, the one that's dragging the black woman on the ground. Okay, look at what they said in the picture. Is it just me, or does Krug have modern taste? So you can tell right away that they were hating, right? But the person who created this cartoon was not too learned in the new science of the DNA that's just come out. Because the black woman would not be modern taste. She would be ancient taste. And the child produced from the joining together of Krug and the black woman would be modern humans, which would be modern taste. All right, so let me give you my theory. Look how Krug is looking at that black woman. Look at him. Mmm, <laughs> mmm, mmm. Finger licking good. Dark chocolate. He dragged her in the cave and he raped her. The young lady had no place to go. The only person she could stay with was Krug. That's all she knew. She was surrounded by these savage, grunting, wicked and evil Neanderthals. So Krug was her protection. So the first thing that she did was that she taught Krug how to wash his stink butt. He must have been putrid. And then after that, she began to cook for Krug. What do you think she made? She probably made him some curry chicken and some cone bread. And you know the way to the black man's stum uh, heart is through his stomach, correct? What do you think about the Neanderthal? And then she went out and she planted a garden. They had their own vegetables. She told Krug, she says, hey, let's be herdsmen. You won't have to go out and hunt all the time. We can raise our own meat. She taught Krug how to start a fire. She taught Krug how to have sex. Krug only knew one position, but the black woman, she knew multiple positions. So here comes the haters. Ugg, with the blonde hair. And Ma Ugg, look at her. She is heated. Let me tell you what Ugg did. After he saw how productive his cousin Krug's cave had become, he took that bat and bust Ma Ugg upside the head and threw her over the cliff and said, let me go and find me one of these <laughs> ancient humans. And over time, over thousands of years, the whole species became whited out and then emerged from the north, a new species, a hybrid that came through the black woman. You see, her womb is how everything came on this earth, every creature, every species of human came on this earth through the black woman. Now let's change our focus. Let's talk about us. Some new DNA evidence just came out. Ghost DNA in West Africans complicate story of human origins. Where did you come from? Where were you kidnapped from? West Africa. About 50,000 years ago, forget those numbers. They're making it up as they go. This just recently happened. Ancient humans, you're talking about black people, okay? Real pure blood humans that came from Noah. And what is now West Africa, apparently procreated with another group 
of ancient humans that scientists didn't know existed. All they had to do was read their Bible, didn't they? There was three ancient humans, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Japheth disappeared. There was only two groups of ancient humans left. Who? Shem, which is us, and Ham, which is in Africa. Hey, how did we get in Africa? Did we come from Africa? Well, we came from the east coast of Africa. And we migrated to the west coast of Africa. You got that part so far? There aren't any bones or ancient DNA to prove it. You don't need any bones or ancient DNA. It's in ourselves. If you check the brothers and sisters that are here in America and then go check the ones in Africa, you'll find out you have the match. But researchers say the evidence is in the genes of modern West Africans. They analyzed genetic material from hundreds of people from Nigeria and Sierra Leone and found signals of what they call ghost DNA from an unknown ancestor. Did you know we mixed with ham for thousands of years? Yeah, always. Because ham is a pure blood people, in Africa that is not the ones who spread out into the promised land. But they're pure blood people. They are really, in all reality, our brothers and sisters, but we come from two different genetic lines, Ham and Shem. And when we mix together, some of that genetic material was transferred. They're talking about us, brothers and sisters. But they don't want to admit stuff like that. But sooner or later, it's all going to have to come out. Look at what they're going to say next. Our own species, look, they've taken hold to Homo sapiens as their own species. Lived alongside other groups that split off from the same genetic family tree at different times. They didn't split off from us. They came through the womb of the black woman that migrated into into Europe. And there's plenty of evidence from other parts of the world that early humans, the black woman, had sex with other hominins, the Neanderthals and Denisovans, like Neanderthals. That's why Neanderthal genes are present in humans today. What humans? In people of European and Asian descent. What do you mean by that? Where's the black people? Where's the Africans? You mean they're not considered humans? Not in the eyes of the white man. We're ancient humans. They're talking about modern humans the hybrids that were produced through mixing. Let me read this again, because I maybe you didn't hear me correctly. That's why Neanderthal genes are present in humans today, in people of European and Asian descent. Okay, now listen to this. If they're only coming through mitochondrial DNA, Where did the paternal DNA come from? You know, the nuclear DNA that's passed down from father to son, from generation to generation to generation that creates not a theoretical bloodline, but the true bloodline. It came from the Neanderthal. Homo sapiens They're talking about ancient humans. Now we've become homo sapiens again. 
also mated with another group, the Denisovans. And those genes are found in people from Oceania. You're talking about in Asia. Are you seeing this, brothers and sisters? A whole different group of humanoid creatures came out of Europe and Asia and the only link that they had to the human stage was to come through the womb of the black woman. The unusual DNA found in West Africa, you know, from the mixing between Ham and Shem, from the children of Yesharo and the Hamites that are in Africa, look what they're going to say, isn't associated with either Neanderthals or Denisovans. They're not from Noah. They're not from Adam. They're a separate species of human that came up in Europe. Hard to believe? Let me say it again, because science has proven it. Neanderthals is not a human species at all. The only way that they can claim humanity it's because they came through the womb of the black woman that cleaned up some of their DNA. So they're not, because there's no paternal DNA mentioned here, only mitochondrial. They're not from Adam. They are not from Noah. So who are they from? It's only one choice that you have, the seed of the serpent. Sanka Ra Raman and his study co-author Arun Dervasula think it comes from a yet to be discovered group. Let me tell you who the group is right now. We don't need to discover them. See, they're trying to dismiss this because it's paternal DNA we're talking about here. It was the children of Yasharo who come from Shem and the Hamites who mix together. To prove it, I can to give you one story in the Bible. Remember Moses? Moses married an African girl and Miriam got angry. She didn't like that. Because he didn't choose one of the children of Yasharal to be his wife. And Yahuwah heard this and he came down and he cursed Miriam. What is the worst curse that one can have put upon them? Listen to me. What is the worst curse for us that someone can put upon you? For you to turn white. You remember what happened? Everyone moved away from her. They had to put her outside the camp for seven days. Moses had to, or Masha had to pray for her so that her skin could return black again. Come on, brothers and sisters. Wake up. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are perfection. The others who are upon the earth are hybrids that came from the black woman and a Neanderthal and a Denisovan. In comes Mary, the mother of God. Isn't that something? She's the queen of heaven because she's married to God. How does she get married to God, Brother David? through procreation yet still this woman is married to Joseph who are these wicked and evil people that put these stories in your book 
and then in their theology, Mary is still a virgin, even after she's had a baby. Look, here's the baby in her lap. She had the little white baby. The angels came from heaven, so the daughters of men, so that they were fair, took wives of all which they chose, and they produced giants. Their seed was corrupted. What did Lamech tell you? What the seed of the fallen ones look like? White as snow, yet red as a rose. Look. So the, jo- the child that was produced from the Holy Ghost having sex with Mary was this little white baby. Don't tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. Because they have this black woman in the Vatican. They worship her. They bow before her. They kiss her. They venerate her. Now they're showing you the child that was produced from her womb, which is this little albinoid child, and all of the pictures that you had and I had in my house when we were growing up of this blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus. Look, here's the template for it. Look at Mary. She even got blonde hair. (laughs) How far will they go? I'll tell you this. There's no limit. They're trying to be legitimate on the world stage. And in order to be legitimate, they had to come through her, the black woman. Let me give you the rundown. The man brought forth his seed through the black woman. It is authorized by Yah because she was created for him. Then the serpent. He brought his seed through the black woman. Isn't that something? The earth was destroyed. The father said they were going to come back again. So we have Japhet and his daughters going into Europe. Japhet, the men disappeared altogether. No paternal DNA found. But mitochondrial DNA was there, which means something happened to the men. They had to be destroyed. So then we come down to Mary. Hmm. She was the link that brought Jesus, who is the Christ, into your Bible. The black woman, again. So the black woman is the link to all of the wickedness that have come upon the earth through the fallen ones. Not saying that she did it intentionally, even though they're doing it intentionally now. Most of it came through rape. Brothers and sisters, you're looking at stratagem. They said that you're too stupid to understand things this complex. So we can even put it out there and you'll never figure it out. Unless you have the spirit of the most high. Let's go to the law. Everything that we have learned, we've learned it through this law. All of the secrets that has been revealed to us has been through the law because the law reveals sin. The law reveals wickedness. Verse 22. If a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband, Then they shall both of them die. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So shalt thou put away evil from your sorrow. Do you feel that this is too harsh of a punishment? Look at why we do it. 
to put away evil, wickedness from our land. If you don't, wickedness will flourish. Can't you see it here in America? How many of you think this punishment is too harsh? If you do, the only reason that you think that it's because you want to continue this fornicative, adulterous, and wicked life that you learned in America. You cannot come to the kingdom with this. Because a righteous man, one who keeps the laws, like me, I will enact judgment upon you. Verse 23. If a damsel that is a virgin... Here we are. Be betrothed, espoused unto a husband, unto a man, a husband man, and find, and the man find her in the city and lie with her. Questions. She's a betrothed damsel, virgin. Why is she in the city? What self-respecting Yasharalite woman would be in the city alone to have this encounter? Verse 24. Then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel? Because she didn't cry out. She didn't resist. And she was in the city. She came there for an encounter. And the man, because he have humbled his neighbor's wife, he's taken her virginity. And look what it says about this young lady. She's already called wife. So shalt thou put away evil from amongst you. They must both die. Well, bro Brother David, what about the Holy Spirit that came down from heaven and had sex with that woman? If the story was true, that angel or that spirit would be sentenced to the earth for an eternity until judgment day comes. And then he's destroyed. Verse 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and a man force her, rape her, and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. Why is that, Brother David? Verse 26. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is nothing in the damsel, no sin that she has committed, that is worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slays him, kills him, murders him, even so is this matter. Do you understand what it's saying? If you rape a woman, you force yourself on her, You've killed her. An eye for an eye. Your sentence is death. Verse 27. For he found her in the field. And the betrothed damsel, she cried out. She resisted. But there was no one there to save her. Verse 28. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed she's not espoused and then he lays hold on her and he lies with her and they be found how can they be found she'll have a belly that starts to come out everyone will notice they'll say hey where did that baby come from verse 29 then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver 
and she shall be his wife. Because he have humbled her, he took her virginity. He consummated the marriage. He may not put her away all his days. Ladies, do you understand what this is? This is to protect you, to keep you safe in the kingdom from predators and men to keep you, keep you safe from women that are predators. The sentence would be death. It's the only way to put the evil out from amongst you. So you see, if the Holy Spirit came in and consummated the marriage before Joseph, is that a crime? Yes. Prima nupte. The Holy Spirit is going to come down said, it's my right to use this womb to bring forth my child. And then after I finish with her, I'm going to give her back to you, Joseph. How weird does that sound? But this is what the Europeans want you to believe. Hanuk, chapter 15. Also, I want you to read Genesis Chapter 6, compare the two. Some people say that the book of Hanuk is not valid, but compare the two stories. Verse 1, And he answered and said to me, Who's he? Yahuwah, the supreme power of the Aliyam, the master of the universe, the creator of all things. And I heard Yahuwah's voice. Fear not. Don't be afraid, Hanuk. I know. I don't blame Hanuk. I would have been afraid too. At what he was seeing. Thou righteous man and scribe of righteousness. Approach hither and hear my voice. They would have had to scrape me off the floor. He called him righteous. It's the gold that we're trying to obtain. Verse 2. And go. Say to the watchers of heaven who have sent you to intercede on behalf of them. Tell them this. You should intercede for men and not men for you. You see, the watchers were here to serve us. Not to have sex with the daughters of men. So here you have Hanuk in the heavens going to intercede on behalf of those who came down and had sex with the daughters of men. They decided to repent they wanted to return back to the heavens. It wasn't all that they thought it would be. Verse 3. Wherefore? Because you have left the high, holy, and eternal heaven and lain with women and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men and taken to yourselves wives and done like the children of earth and begotten giants as your sons see there's that word begotten again these are spirits that came from heaven now verse 4 and though you were holy spiritual living the eternal life you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women. Look at that. They had all of that. They had great power to travel through the universe. They could never die. But yet they came down and defiled themselves with the blood of women 
and begotten. See that word begotten? That's sex. Remember, these are spirits from heaven. It just told you, spiritual. And have begotten children with the blood of flesh. Forbidden. And as the children of men have done, have you lusted also after flesh and blood, as those also who die and perish? Who is that? Men. Verse 5. Therefore have I given them, men, wives, also that they might impregnate them. The woman is only created for the man. She came out of the man and beget children by them, that thus nothing might be wanting to them on the earth. And down through the generations, from father to son, to father to son, father to son, from generation to generation to generation, until a righteous seed would arise in the last days that would come back to Yahuwah, keep his commandments, love him with all their heart, mind, and soul. That's you and I. Verse 6. But you, O watchers, now he's going to talk about them, you were formerly spiritual. Ah, when they defiled themselves with the daughters of men, they lost the estate in which they were created. You were living the eternal life. You were immortal for all generations of the world. Verse 7, And therefore I have not appointed wives for you. Listen, he's telling them the reason why he didn't give them a wife. Could this have been the problem? Is this the complaint? Is this what Satan put or God Rael put in all of their minds that he made a woman for them? And look, he made none for us. Hmm. Something to think about. For as for the spiritual ones of heaven. In heaven is their dwelling. There's no mixing. There's no go going back and forward. Verse 8. And now the giants who are produced from the spirits and the flesh. You know, the ones who were formerly spiritual that came down and had sex with the daughters of men shall be called evil spirits upon the earth. And on the earth, they are sentenced to dwell. Verse 9. Because evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies. Because they were born from women. You see it has men there? Because the woman came out of the man. They were born from women. And from the holy watchers is their beginning and primal origin. So the evil spirits that are upon this earth. Came through. The womb of the woman also. The man doesn't have any womb, so we know that to be true. They shall be evil spirits on earth. And evil spirits shall they be called. Does anyone fit this resume to you? Verse 10. As for the spirits of heaven, in heaven shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. Hey, we know now that that story about Jesus coming down from heaven, becoming man, and he's approved of by God, is a story of the fallen ones. <laughs> Can you believe it? They put it in your book. Verse 11. And the spirits of the giants, they afflict, they oppress, they destroy, they attack, they do battle and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble. They take no food. Well, Brother David, so what do you mean are the spirits that we're talking here spiritual or physical? Both. They have a flesh suit. They have a body. 
But at the beginning of verse 11, it says, and the spirits of the giants. So we're talking about the spirits take no food, but nevertheless, hunger and thirst and cause offenses. That's because they have a flesh suit. They couldn't carry out all these things unless they did. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men. How many families that are left? Ham and Shem. Those are the only two families that are the children of men that are on this earth. And against the woman. How did their new species of human, the Neanderthal, how was he able to come on the world stage? Through the black woman. They killed the men. It's without a doubt. And they took the women as the booty because they have proceeded from them. I'm just going to ask you a few questions. Does any group of people on this planet have this wicked resume? I want you to read the story from chapter 1 to chapter 15. And you're going to see that the Most High himself, all of the children that proceeded from the fallen ones, he turned them against each other to kill each other forever throughout their generations and their fathers will watch. And these evil spirits that were produced by them, they turned on us. Can you identify them? Can you identify the people who have been killing each other for thousands and thousands of years? And he made an art form out of it. Can you identify the most powerful militaries that are on this earth and the people who are controlling them? Can you identify the people who have created all of these world wars? Can you identify the people who have come in and colonized all the lands and destroyed the indigenous populations? Can you identify them? Those are your evil spirits that are upon the earth. You see the lineages that the Father put in the book. We just were blessed to be reading lineages in Matthew and Luke because this lineage came up. The lineage tells the story. And it tells you who throughout all of these centuries. I mean, when I was in school, I was intrigued. I wanted to know what was the missing link that brought that monkey creature into the world stage and made him a human. And to come down to these last days and find out that DNA evidence proves that the black woman is that missing link is incredible. So where did that other bloodline come from? Because we're the ancient ones from Noah. Where did they come from? There's only one more choice. Remember, the sons of Yah shall be against the sons of God. God was introduced by only one group of people. And Yah, he is introduced by one group of people. Don't call on God, because you have switched sides. Shalom.